How can 5G support the industrial internet and what new use cases might it realise? To join me in this discussion this morning at 5G World, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Yari Collin, who is CTO of Telia Finland, Jane Rygaard, your Head of Mobile Network Marketing at Nokia, and Caroline Chan, VP and GM of the 5G Infrastructure Division at Intel. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, First of all, the three of you, the three companies, are collaborating. Can we a bit of the history of the, of the collaboration and why you're working together, Yari? Yeah, first of all, uh, when we are entering into this new 5G era, it's really about doing things together and collaborating because we are just uh, in, the, in the first phases of the 5G, we are having the first pilots and start to learn what, 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 what will be possible in the in industrial domain with the 5G. And therefore, we are closely collaboration with Nokia all the time and, and, and our Intel. And, and then there is also one Finnish uh, uh, startup company, Finway, that was very much involved in this pilot we did in northern part of Finland in Oulu, base station factory of Nokia. Uh, and Jay, what has Nokia contributed? So, so ba well, first of all, we contributed a factory for, for this specific one, right? Which is quite, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yes, it is. But of course, we come from a from the with the five G view, and also how can we start already today with what we have of, of LTE technology? So, of course, as an infrastructure company, but also as as how to build the use case on top. As I said, I think with the what has been very important here in, in general collaboration is this is not something that one company could do on our on our own. So the fact that the startups, uh, Telia, Intel, Nokia, we all need to work together to realize the potential of, of what is there. And um, yeah, so factory infrastructure, um, a lot of the process management on how do you actually, because it's, you know, where we are talking for this specific use case in, in Northern Finland and Oulu, our factory is actually the factory that makes our radios that we then use in 5G and also in 4G, but, but we are able to, what can we do to optimize our own processes with it? And, and that has been a, a good collaboration, yes. And Caroline, what, what's Intel bringing in? How long have you been working together? Well, first of all, the Nokia is a very, very important customer of us. And we've been, uh, been a good partner for a long time. And on top of that, Nokia actually was one of our oldest partners in, in, in Mac. Mm -hmm. We actually co-founded the SC Mac uh, ISG together. So we've been in this journey for, for a long time. Uh, Intel provides the, the, the technology, the silicon platform, and the, some of the foundational software. And we also looked into, just like uh, uh, Jane said, that really this is a cross-domain uh, initiative. You know, the previous generation used to be a very uh, telecommunication focus, you know, within a certain domain. But this is really the first one when you add the computer communication, you add in the enterprise, you're doing a lot of different verticals. So we're touching upon AI, analytics, and so it really requires a cross domain. So we're really happy to be part of this uh, three-way partnership. Actually, four-way. You yeah. do have a software company in there too. So, so we're calling this the factory floor deployment. Yeah. Um, what are the what are the challenges it's designed to overcome? I mean, why do we even need to be looking at this? Uh, well, I, I would say that uh, with the 5G, the industry sectors can have a completely different business models. They will be real time business models uh, using lots of data that is available from the different data sources. And 5G as a technology is not only about the connectivity, but it's really about combining different data sources together. And that requires collaboration bit, between different parties. And this is what we demonstrated in this old factory pilot. There were several players in there. I, I would say from, from exactly one of the things that we get, apart from technology, is if we, if we truly get to the part of where our network is so agile that we can continue to, to uh, change, in this case, manufacturing lines. So are we agile enough that I, in, in, uh, as, a, as a manufacturer, as a factory owner, am I able to change my production line quick enough to, need the, to meet the needs that I get? So the agility part of what we get is something that we didn't have before. When you wire everything up, when you actually build all your processes on something that is static, it can take me months to change things. And, and by going wireless and with going with the, with the promises of 5G with low latency and, and reliability, well then I'm able to do the same things but actually in a completely different setup so I get the agility with me in the production. And, and Caroline, you've been advocating um, more focus on the industrial internet for, for, for some time now, haven't you? Oh yeah, I mean we clearly see this for 5G to be truly the ROI that everybody talks about. It, it takes a lot of investment, right? You have to go into beyond the consumers. And we do definitely see the in Industry 4.0 is a key use cases, probably one of the 
even more the most important use one of the most important use cases for 5G uh, is especially pushing this whole low latency dynamic network slicing SLA guarantee all the way to the edge yeah uh, Jane are you able to tell us about the the business impact of this I mean how, how, how does this affect because we're all focused on capex opex efficiencies <laughs> it, but it, it so one of the key things for us has been, and that's the nice thing about having the factory as ours, we can, we can try it out, but it's really like, how do, what do we need to change of our processes within our own manufacturing, so within our operations, and what do we need to, uh, when we understood what we can gain in these changes, how do we then implement it underneath? So it really is a play between what do I need of technology, what do I need to change on top, because it's not just trivial to, really, to change my processes of a manufacturing line. It's something that goes. So in this case, specifically for the one here, how can we use video analytics to optimize? How can I do things smarter, more agile, not just can I do it in shorter time or can I do it uh, with lower investment, right? But can I, can I adapt well enough to the environment or to the industry I'm working in where my customers yeah. sometimes need things a little bit faster than I probably anticipated yeah. a little bit earlier or can I change things quicker? So this whole idea about how to really build a digital factory, this is a big part of it. Yeah. And in, in this particular use case, we were able to demonstrate how this quality inspection can be done uh, with the latest technology and, and do the quality assurance so that we don't sort of test it afterwards, but we can make sure that the quality is there while the production happens. Uh, uh, Caroline, what, um, what network technology is this using? Are we, are, we use, are we using some new elements, some new components here, we're testing out those, as well as the processes? Yeah, I, th I think it, all, all of it, right? We talk, it, I think Jane talked about peoples and processes. The certainly even the factory has a, has a change. And then from the network side, we talk about a, a network slicing, right? We talk about a very flexible and composable network in order to apply just uh, video analytics. In fact, this morning, I was in a different panel with uh, Nokia. We talked about AI on the edge. It's, it's very much in, in that the network has become so adaptable and you have this AI running on the edge, in this case, of video analytics. The feedback loop is a, is a closed feedback loop, that, but then the factory itself needs to adapt yeah. to, the, to the process. Because now you're going to get this instantaneous feedback loop versus something you happen. Otherwise, it's, it's a manual process, right? So it does require people processing change, doesn't it? And, and, and this thing about the edge is actually a very good one, right? Because if you look at, at your network in, in Finland, yeah. what is available in Oulu, what you have in data centers further south, exactly. how do you actually make that work? So where can you use multi-access edge computing close to, and where is it okay to transfer to a data center, which is further away and do the processing there? So I think this is actually a very good split of saying, exactly. yes, we can do things close and we can do things further away. Exactly, exactly so. That's what I already mentioned. It's not only the connectivity, but really how to manage the data and yes. how to do the data analytics and, and which data has to be close to the users, which is possible to yes. have a 500 kilometers away from all of us yes. in our data center. Might we, might we extend this? Might we see uh, more facilities? Or do you need to try out slightly different approaches? Where, where's it going to go? I, I think there's a wish to say that now we've had one of the use cases within it, but which of course, if I look at it from a, from a factory point of view, that is one out of many, right? How many wires can I cut and where can I optimize my processes for different things? Where can, else can I apply uh, augmented reality, virtual reality type of functionality? And, and no matter what we do, that, that is again, this collaboration of not only the three of us here, but the people with the, with the analytics on top, with the people who has their understanding of, of uh, or maybe the clever software to do some of the AI, right? So that's... Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. And on this process of, of these, these tests and trials and experimentation, you've got to feedback, haven't you? You've got to then look at the results and adapt, and that goes back into the, into the commercial processes. Yeah, uh, improve exactly. upon it, right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and again, like anything else, I think when it comes to 5G, we need to stop talking about waterfall models of everything we do. Right, it's everything is DevOps. We try something, it works out. We need to feedback and, and and do things again and develop that way because this way of predicting now the killer app of whatever we're doing, exactly. it we're gonna be too old before we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What other use cases might we see? We're not going to predict the killer app, but you know, there seems to be a, a growing opinion that 5G may well be defined by these, the vertical markets rather than the, the, the consumer side. Uh, might we start to see some um, other early use cases of 5G other than the, the factory applications? Well, I would say that most probably the 5G will start with the industrial applications. So the manufacturing, what we just demonstrated, uh, let's say transportation, 
uh, uh, logistics uh, and, and traffic all together, and maybe even healthcare is something. And then uh, those companies that are utilizing the technology, they can start building the consumer services that are then sort of coming to the picture. So of course the consumers are coming, but maybe the, 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 the order is that first the industrial sector and, and then the consumers are following. Of course there are some applications for consumers as well, like e-sport, uh, which requires low latency, but so on. But uh, I mean, lots of different applications are coming to the play. Where do you see maybe some of the, some of the other um, exciting areas that, that interest you at the moment? So, so I said I think that that if you look at if I look at it from a global perspective, right? There's lots of things happening in many places, but definitely from a European perspective, it, it is focused on on what are the, the non just more broadband kind of applications. So uh, we have an, we have another um, place where we're working, which is in the port, right? How can we? Again, industrial type of, of use cases actually takes up a lot because there's a lot of efficiency gains that you can get out of of lo working with, with you know with the partners in that industry. Right. I've got a final question. Um, in order to fully realise the commercial benefits of, of 5G in applications such as we've been discussing, what what are some of the the main challenges that still need to be overcome? Because we are we are, we are still learning as we as we go here. What what do you think are we the industry needs to focus on? Um, regards 5G to get to the commercial stage? I would say that the, the business models are going to be changed completely. If, if nowadays companies are focusing on their own products, in the future is about the customer and how to build the ecosystem around the customer, providing real-time services for that particular customer. So uh, it's, it's going to be quite tra tragic changes for, for many companies. Yeah. I was about to say the same, because exactly with, with, with what we get with 5G, we have to build cross-domain eco ecosystems, a bit of a buzzword, right? But how do we work across all of these different, how can we get, make sure that, you know, when we sit in the telco side, have we understood the real challenges of, of the sectors that we're actually trying to serve with this? And therefore the collaboration needs to be much more than, here is a SIM, please connect, right? Right, right. right. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Many times it's not a one-to-one -one relationship yeah. anymore, right? So it's a one-to-multi, multi-to-multi. And, and then also the things which we're very used to doing, like platform as a service. But going forward, what about AI as a service, security as a service, yeah. right? So a lot of these functions as a service need to become a reality. And I think the industry still need to go through some learnings to how to provide that effectively. And number two is how do you monetize that? Yeah, sure. And, and in terms of your partnership, expect more in, in the future? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next year, this time, three of us again. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Look forward to that. But for now, though, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.